Yeah, just a quick video this morning about um, High Down Prison and uh, the difference between normal location and the vulnerable prisoner unit or the nonces wing, if you want to call it that, or the numbers, you know, they call it. Uh, this is a story about that. Um, it's what it is, you know, 99% uh, of people on uh, the VPU or the nonces wing, if you want to call it that, the vulnerable prisoners unit, it's a bit of a mouthful, it's easy to say nonces wing, a little percentage of them, they're not on there because they're rapists or grasses or nonces, whatever, you know, there's a percentage of people on there that um, are on there because they've got mental illness. Uh, I knew two brothers from Carshilton, uh, one of them uh, did do a robbery, an armed robbery with a Stanley knife on um, Melvin Clark, the DIY store there in Carshilton. I don't know why he chose that. Uh, maybe he nicked the Stanley knife out there first, then done the robbery. I don't know, but I don't think he got any money, but he did get seven years for that. Now, I was away at the same time in High Down, and I know a lot of people from around that area. He was on the numbers because I see him. He used to look like uh, Pixie out of the series Monkey. You remember Monkey? Uh, <sighs> ah, Monkey! Yeah, Monkey Magic. It was a show back then in the 80s and 90s. So this guy that robbed Melvin Clark, he looked just like Mo uh, Pixie out of Monkey Magic. And, you know, because he looked so strange and uh, he had mental health and uh, he couldn't really defend himself, you know. A lot of people thought he was a nonce just from the way he looked, but he wasn't. Uh, he'd done his bird on the numbers, but funnily enough, he had a brother uh, who was also in high, high down, sorry, at the same time, not high down, high down at the same time. His brother, Sean, and um, yeah, he was on the VPU as well. And the reason he was on the VPU is because um, for mental health reasons again he'd had some beef with some people outside and he thought they were after him and they accused him of being a grass and he wasn't and he got all paranoid because he was a cokehead and put himself on the numbers uh which this sort of stuff does happen you know so when i was on house block two there uh i remember i was on exercise and when you're on the exercise yard on house block two there's uh one of the free spurs on that wing uh, one of the spurs is for the vulnerable prisoners, the VPU, they call it, the vulnerable prisoners unit. And uh, this, these two brothers were on there, the two ginger brothers from Carshall. And, and um, where the wing is, you've got the TV room next to it. And in that TV room, you know, when you're out on the exercise yard, you can see the TV room and you can see in there. But usually they're not in there watching telly when you're on exercise yard. But this one time, there was one guy in there. And uh, in the TV room, looking out, talking to someone. But I'll get to that. You know, this day I was out on exercise, walking around the exercise yard with uh, John McQuaid and uh, Little Sid Hussain. And Sid, obviously, because he's from Carshorton, he knows this geezer who's in the nonce's uh, wing on the TV in the TV room, and he goes to speak to him. But McQuaid see him talking to the guy. And he says, uh, who are you fucking talking to there, mate? Don't talk to them. And then uh, Sid's going, yeah, but I know him. He's not a nonce and all that. Uh, I just want to talk to him. And McQuaid's going, nah, mate. Fucking come away from there or I'll fucking do you and all. You know, and all that. So um, what's happened is is uh, Sid's just come away and the gigs uh, went back on to the, uh, out of the TV room, you know, and the conversation was finished. But uh, it got the conversation going on why he was talking to some guy who was on the numbers, you know, on the nonces wing. And it turned out that, uh, like I said earlier, it was Ginger Sean. And uh, he wasn't a nonce, he wasn't a grass. He was there because of mental health. And uh, he was a cokehead, doing a lot of cocaine, bad for mental health. And it all spiralled out for him in his head. And he got all paranoid and thought people were after him. And it was all in his head. And he... He just got so paranoid he had some sort of a breakdown and put himself on the number, sadly. But what happened after that, uh, a friend of mine from Carshorton had quite a bit of clout in there and in Carshorton said to him, look, come out of there. You, you don't want to be on there with all the nonces, sort of all is forgiven sort of thing. So he did come on there and 
uh, for a bit, Sean did. He come off the numbers and he was just walking around the wing and that, you know. So, uh, and eventually he just got allocated to Downview, a normal prison, yeah. So um, what happened, I carried on doing whatever I was doing, you know, using the brown in there, the coke in there. You know, I was doing that all the time in there and eventually I got allocated to Downview. So I ended up bumping into him again, the ginger geezer, in uh, Downview, you know. So what happened when I was in Downview, you know, uh, um, basically, you know, uh, when I was in Downview, I was over there for the uh, Addictive Diseases Trust course, which was like the drug course. You know, uh, Downview was the first prison to have uh, do uh, MDT tests, you know, man mandatory drug testing, you know, and they had a machine to, to uh, um, sample all the all your uh, urine samples, you know, because they had days out there and all that, and if you were clean, you could get a town visit or your home leave and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, during that time, I was using a lot in Downview, and I couldn't give a clean sample, so I had to stay on Sea Wing, which is sort of like the wing where you don't really get any privileges like town visits and all that. So I was on that wing and the ginger geezer was there, you know, and he was always irritating me all the time. And um, a lot of people didn't like him, you know, especially because he had put himself on the numbers there, you know. And uh, as time went on, he got braver and braver. You know, ginger, he's getting mouthy. He was having it with a few people, a few yardies and that, you know, and all this and uh, a bit of friction ended up you know uh, between me and him started a little bit of friction you know and uh, uh, one time uh, me and my mate we put a dead pigeon under his pillow you know just to wind him up and he freaked out over that you know and over that that sort of went went on from one thing to another you know and i ended up uh basically with ginger he got all mouthy so i ended up hitting him over the head with half a brick that i found on the floor you know so i bashed him over the head with his brick and he was taken to outside hospital you know and a few other people wanted him done anyway you know and uh, basically because of that uh when i've done it it was in the grounds you know out out away from main the main part of Sea Wing, right near the fence, uh, in the little chalets where they do all the prop stores and all that. Yeah, that's where I done that. But as I was hitting him with the brick in the face, I think I hit him about three or four times. He was standing up in front of me, and I've hit him once, twice, three, four times, and then he's gone down. I didn't think he was going to go down, but it was like a delayed reaction. So he went down, but just as I was looking around and going, uh, walk away and throw the brick away uh somebody i think it's a geezer black roger was watching tv on sea in sea wing and they had the sort of fire exit door open where you got the bars there you can't get in and out in that fire exit it's locked but he see me do it you know and what happened was uh after bang up that night the next morning the screws just come for me and said like you're getting ghosted you know what you've done and i said i don't know what you're on about i ain't done nothing you know, and uh, basically I, I was as told to pack my kit and uh, I was walked up by two screws up to um, reception and they called a taxi and I was put in a taxi with two big screws and then the taxi driver and I was driven to High Point and uh, that's when I went to High Point. So that's why I got ghosted was for attacking Ginge with a brick, you know, and um, yeah, I... When I, I, after it happened and I see that geezer Roger see me, I thought he wouldn't say anything, but he did, you know, so that's what you've got to remember when you're doing people in there and having fights and that is, uh, don't be having fights when people can see you and all that, you know, it's like on the landings and that, on the ones or it, during association when everyone's getting mouthy and leery and, you know, and but words are nothing, you know. Doing all that in front of the screws is stupid because it always comes on top, you know. If you're going to have a fight in there, you've got to do it in the cell with someone at the door, holding the door, uh, so they can keep dog, you know, for when any screws are coming and that, you know. You don't want it all out in the open where everyone can see. As a rule, usually people do have fights when there's screws there. It's just stupid because you know it's going to get stopped, but there you go. So, yeah, I've done him with a brick three or four times and he was taken to outside hospital um because uh the injuries were so severe but um 
yeah, I don't know if Ginger's still alive, alive but I hope he is well, you know, and um, like I say, a little bit out of character for me, but um, I was thinking about that the other day, it's like that flight or fright thing, you know, with me, sometimes if there was a weapon there and, you know, and I thought I was going to be under attack, I'd pick something up and get in there first, that's the sort of mentality you get in there, you know, so yeah, but uh, I did hear through the prison grapevine that he was alright, and uh, after that he was shipped back to Highdown, um, I don't know whether he went back on the numbers or not when he got over there, but uh, I'm not sure, I think he was doing about four or five years, but, um, I can't really remember, but uh, yeah, so just another little story there really about, you know, the sort of violence you come up against. And uh, I just want to say I haven't really thought about this story, so I hope you can get the gist of it all. And um, I'll speak to you all soon. Have a good day, guys. Thanks.